Hello everyone. Happy Wednesday. Thank you for joining me here tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. That's 9.30 Eastern and 6.30 Pacific Time. And it's a time that we can relax and craft together for about an hour here. And I work on projects from beginning to end so you can be part of the whole process along the way. You won't miss anything. Uh, and the, all the videos go up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies when we're done here. So tonight we are continuing on the Lil Felt Village by Betts White. So this is a 12 month long stitch along. It's 12 different cute little houses made out of felt with embroidery. They are 3D houses. So it's kind of like those ceramic, uh, like those ceramic holiday villages um, that people get, but it's all made out of felt. So we are working on her new one for autumn. It is the spooky clock tower and I'll show you a picture of it when I turn you around here. Uh, you can join the club. So it's released as the seasons come out. So spring and summer have come out already. Uh, so you'll get all those patterns right away for signing up. And then the first couple from autumn and then winter still needs to be released yet. So uh, you would get all of the patterns um, that have been released so far um, when you join the club. Uh, and then we are just sti stitching this uh, spooky clock tower, but who knows, we may stitch another one because they are just so freaking cute. So uh, be sure to check that out. Um, and uh, we got started last night and we are cutting out felt. We have some of our felt pieces. So I got this pretty burgundy felt. This is the clock tower bit. So this will be um, all uh, like a little square rectangular building when we're done here. Uh, and we are just cutting out our gray colored pieces. We have some felt to finish. And then we also have the Peltex. So that's kind of a new to me uh, material. It's a little bit like felt, so it's the thickness of felt, um, but it's one-sided uh, fusible. So on this side, it's got like those little glue dots on it, and this side is just a little kind of soft like felt, and it is kind of the thickness of felt that you can kind of tell. It's used for bag making quite a bit, I believe, and uh, it's, we're going to use it to add, uh, I suspect, uh, more sturdiness to our felt here. And just another quick reminder on the felt, if you are doing this project, remember you want wool blend felt. If you are getting it from a Joann's or Michael's or something like that, uh, ask for wool blend. It is not that pre-cut um, eco blend or eco felt that's on the wall. It's not that. It is in the uh, fabric section with the bolts of fabric. So uh, be sure to check there. It's just a little thicker. And the other key factor with it is that you can iron it <laughs> without it melting to your iron. Um, unlike the eco felt. So uh, important. Um, all right, I'm going to flip you around and uh, we are going to continue uh, getting our felt prepped for this project. Okay. This is where we left off last night. I got my mess happening over here. And uh, we have all these pieces. We have gray pieces. We have a couple burgundy pieces. I'm doing a burgundy clock tower. And let me show you. I'm just going to open up my Instagram here. Uh, here is Bets White. So Bets White right here if you want to follow her on Instagram. This is her project and this is what we're making. This gorgeous little spooky clock tower. It's just so sweet and silly and I love it. And look we even have we even have some little um, fake little candles here that are going to go to to light up the windows. So this is um, this is our project that we're working on. So instead of the purple, I have a burgundy color, um, just because they did not have the purple there, and I just saw this color and thought, oh, this just looks like fall. So I'm going to have that, and then this gold is going to be is going to be the door instead of the brown. And then I still then I got the same gray and the same black as here. So we are prepping all the pieces. So like for example. You know, this is the tower. What's this one? This is the clock house. So uh, it's one or the other of these purple pieces. And right now we're cutting all these like little detailed gray 
uh, bobbers here. And then uh, we still have the black and that brown to do. So that is the plan. I know, isn't this burgundy pretty? It makes me want to, um, this was a suggestion in the instructions from Betts that um, you could stitch like ivy going up it. And I just think like, how pretty would this be with like ivy growing up? And like, what if it's like all the colors of the leaves and the ivy are turning like that bright red? Um, that would be so cool. Like just to stitch some ivy and then stitch some bright red and some kind of gold and green uh, leaves on the here. I think, I don't know, that may have to happen. We will, we will see. So, all right, we have all these cut out. This is where we let off, left off last night. We have all these fellers uh, to cut out yet. So I am not cutting the windows out yet, just the outer, outer bits. So let's just continue with this and then we'll move on to the two other colors of felt that I need to do. So uh, I used freezer paper here um, freezer paper, you can just get it from, you know, like where you get saran wrap and all that sort of stuff in the grocery store. Um, it is kind of glossy on one side and papery on the other side. It works great for, um, it works great for making templates like this because you can trace right to it. It's like, like tracing paper. You can see through it. So I traced the template onto the freezer paper, and then you can just, with your iron, I should preheat the iron here. Um, with the iron, you can um, fuse it to your felt, or any fabric really, and it won't harm the fabric at all. You can just pull it off when you're done. It won't leave a residue or anything, and you can actually reuse, reuse um, the templates as well. So it's a pretty neat deal and just for something from the grocery store, which is kind of cool. So I'm doing that technique for these felt pieces. Now you don't want to do that technique for the Peltex um, because the Peltex, that stabilizer, that interfacing, that thick, thick stabilizer that we're going to need for these, um, this spooky clock tower, that has a fusible on one side. So if we ironed, you know, our template onto that, then it would also fuse, um, fuse those, that glue from the Peltex onto whatever surface. All right, here we are. I think this is our cute little door. Like, so this'll be, this'll be like the cute little base for it, I think. Neat. All right. Um, just a few more pieces here. Got a lot of prepping done last night. Oh, Deborah, I hope so. I think these colors just look so fallish, but it's still, it still hints at Halloween and all that um, too. So I think it's, it's going to be fun. Actually, from talking about it last night, it does kind of feel very collegiate too. Um, especially if we throw some ivy on there and, and stuff. So I don't know. <laughs> I think it's going to be cute. All right. So this is actually, you know, I'm, I'm cutting slowly and, you know, deliberately here because whatever we end up with an edge, that's, that's our nice felt edge. I mean, this is, you know, we're not tucking a seam allowance under or anything like that. How wide was the wool felt? I think it was um, 42 inches, Joe. I'm not positive, but I suspect it was um, 42 inches, which is well beyond um, what I need. Uh, really, if the wool felt was cut, or the wool blend, it's wool blend, it's not entirely wool, but if the wool blend felt was cut into those nice little pre-cut pieces versus getting it off the bolt, that would have been nicer because I definitely didn't need this much. Um, but again, this type of felt you can use for all sorts of fun stuff. So, so whatever, I got a little extra felt. Um, also, Betts does have a kit 
of all the supplies. So like the glue and those little candles and everything that you might need and all the felt. Um, so the purple and everything from, from her photo, uh, that's all available. So uh, if you join the club, there's, there's links if you want to get the get her kit, then you don't have to worry about whether they're going to have, um, have the felt color or not. But it's also kind of fun. I just wanted to see if I could, because uh, a lot of these are new supplies to me. Like I don't buy uh, wool blend felt. I don't buy the Peltex very often, or even like those little candles. So I wanted to just see, like, can I even get this stuff from a Joann's or something like that? And they did have everything I needed there. I did have to ask. So I, I had to ask about um, where to get the vellum. So that's going to be like our frosted windows. Um, that's over in the scrapbooking section. And I did have to ask about the wool blend felt too. It is in with the bolts of fabric, but it, it kind of blends in with the fleece and all that other stuff. So I asked specifically for the wool blend felt and they were able to guide me um, into the right direction. If one person doesn't know, then ask, ask another one, another person there. All right, we're done with the gray here. So what's kind of fun is, you know, some of these pieces are what's going to go on the, the tower here. So like, I think this is a guide for here. So this has, this will be like, We'll have a little gray window, especially when we cut that out. And then I think there's a little circle window. So it's going to be kind of like that. So we can kind of actually start seeing, seeing some things, which is, which is interesting. Okay. So this has the, this is the clock face on it and a couple other little windows on its side. <laughs> it's going to be cute. Uh, and these, I suspect, are those little, let me get the picture again. Uh, I think that will be like these little gray jobbies on the side here. Isn't that just a clever, it's just a cute little detail. It adds to the spookiness and I don't know, there's something special about it. So I, I, I suspect that's what these are for. And then these are for the door. So these little these little guys on, on the door there. So, all right, we can move on. Let's just scooch all this to the side. I'm a little nervous about losing pieces, so I'm just gonna keep, I'm gonna kind of stack them all, keep them together. All these little fellers. And we'll cover it up with that piece. All right, so I'm gonna just set that to the side. Um, next up we have the black felt, but first we need to trace it onto, um, our freezer paper. I think I will most likely have to cut or rip off some more freezer paper, but let's see what we can get. So I have my list. This is from the instructions from the club. So again, be sure to check the club. Um, if you want to join in on this project, I do have a link below here. If you wanted to check that out uh, again, there are 12 different, different bits and they're so cute. Oh, a cookie sheet. I should put it on a, like a cookie sheet or something. That's a great idea. Um, I'll have to get one of those out um, just to store everything. I'll probably clean up after tonight a little bit. You know, I got my pile of stuff here. Ooh, spider webs. That would be so cute on it. Oh, I love that idea, Adrian. Yes. Little spider webs. All right, so black, black fabric. So, okay. Um, first, I need to trace it onto the freezer paper. So I'm gonna put the glossy side against my template and draw on the like paper feeling side. Okay, we need the rooftop felt. So let's, I gotta find all these pieces. Rooftop. Rooftop. Rooftop felt. There we are. Okay. That I can get on on this piece still. Um, Gretchen, you have to get the whole collection. So that's how Betts is running um running this club. It is the the whole collection. 
Um, I don't know if she's going to separate those out later or not, um, but right now it's, it's the whole bit. But, um, you know, you're getting kind of a lot. <laughs> you're getting like all these patterns and uh, um, it's, it's on Teachable. Uh, that's kind of like a, a learning platform, a teaching platform on, on the web. I'm going to write this down. And so it's really organized well to, for, for just like learning. Um, but yes, so it is, it is all of the, you have to get, it's all of them. And right now, if you buy it now, you'll get everything that happened prior. So you'll have all those patterns immediately. So like the three from spring, the three from summer, uh, and then these two, this and the schoolhouse that came before this. Those are the autumn ones so far. The next autumn one and all the winter ones have not been released yet, so you'll get those as they as they come out. And we actually only have these instructions so far. So for the for the um for the spooky clock tower, the next ones or the soon we'll get the instructions for the embroidery and then after that we'll get the assembly instructions. So she's pacing it out like a class. Um, so you can participate in the group and you know post your progress and all that sort of stuff too or ask your questions and Bets will answer them. Okay, tower platform felt. Tower platform felt. Okay, and also cut out the center square it says on this one. Good to know. Alright. I'm leaving a little space in between because I'm gonna just kind of roughly cut these. I'm going to cut them really well once they're on the felt and I'm cutting through both the felt and the template. But right now, um, when I cut these templates out, I'm just going to kind of roughly cut a little seam allowance on it. Okay, and I will cut the square out right away. So on the windows and all that, um, it said not to, not, not to cut them out right away. But this one it did say so. Okay, uh, tower platform. And I'm gonna just write cut, so that's a reminder. All right, next up, did I skip one? Rooftop felt, tower platform. Okay, and then clock platform. Okay, right here. And I'm out of um, the freezer paper, so you know this is literally just you know Reynolds freezer paper. Uh, you know, and you know, to like wrap meat, but what's neat is they actually on the packaging show you that you can use it for templates and and uh, other stuff. So they figured it out. They figured out that the crafters are are using this stuff to those smart people. Okay. Um, clock platform felt right here. So it does take a little time to prep all these, but it's all part of the process. I cannot wait till we embroider them because ugh, they're just going to look so cute all of a sudden. And uh, I love that they're 3D. Like these are all self-standing and I mean, this is just going to make the cutest fall decoration. I actually kind of want to make the schoolhouse one. I think I mentioned this last night. I'm reading all of the Anne of Green Gables books again and the, the, um, the, hold on, clock platform. The uh, Little Felt Village uh, guy that was released last, uh, the one before the Spooky Clock Tower, was a little schoolhouse and it was red and it had a little bell tower with a little bell in it and I don't know it just reminded me of my Anna Green Gables books that I'm reading. Okay clock platform, okay door frame. So all these templates are um, part of the club door frame right here. Oh and Anne with an E I have been watching that as well. Um, I watched them all like when they came out so it's been you know, several months since I've seen them, uh, but uh, that actually, I mean, obviously, this is probably why, that's, that, this is probably a lot of people are doing this, rereading the Anna Green Gables books because of that show, but that show is just so darling and sweet, and uh, um, 
So that's why I started reading the books again. I, I have them all from when I was little. I have the whole collection of them. You know, with its, like, 80s paintings and stuff on the, on the covers, which I love. Um, and, oh, they are just so good. When you have had, like, a long day, and then you just read some Anne of Green Gables or, uh, you know, Anne of the Island or all those sort of things, like, oh, it just is a calming, just lovely, fun, just topper for a day. It is just so nice. So <laughs> if you've not read them in a while, uh, I would totally recommend picking them up again. It's just, like I said, the best part of like a long evening, like a long day, the end of the day. Okay, roof spikes are next. See if they fit right here. Yeah, not quite. Let's just run along the edge. <laughs> These look like monster teeth. Uh, so that has just been that has been the series of books. I'm I'm on. I'm almost done with them, which is making me so sad. I'm on. Uh, um, oh gosh, what is it called now? I just started. I'm on like page two. Of um, it's the one that's still Anne based, like Anne of whatever. Maybe this one is Anne of the Island. Um, it's the one before it goes to like Rilla of Ingleside and and that sort of thing. So um, I'm it's it's the last one, the Anne ones before it goes to the Rilla ones. It's making me sad. <laughs> uh. But, you know, it was so fun reading the ones where she's in college and, oh, man, her first house. Just got done with that one. They're just so comforting and fun to read. It's like having a hot, nice hot chocolate next to you. That's, like, what reading, reading the books are like. A long day sitting by the fire drinking hot chocolate. That's what the Anna Green Gables books are. <laughs> there we got our monster teeth. I'm gonna actually draw in um, these bits too because we we're gonna I think fold along these lines. So I'm just gonna draw them in right away. I don't know is there a new season of Anne with an E? Actually what is that on? Is it on Netflix? I don't even remember now. It was just like two seasons, right? Yes, exactly, Gus. Going back to an old friend, that's totally what it felt like for sure. And now it got me um, getting some other old books out. Um, just old, other old series that I want to read after. Okay, Roof Spikes. Well, that's obvious. Roof Spikes. Okay, uh, Clock Border. All right, that's this. And I'm leaving, you know, a half inch or so in between because I'm going to need to leave some edge. We'll get this on the felt yet. I'm kind of going by color. Anything to not get me confused. Like, I could have drawn out all of these shapes all at once for all the felt pieces, but I didn't accidentally want to put them on like one felt color in the, instead of the other. So I'm, I'm cutting these templates out in the way that I have to think the least, <laughs> which is a good thing when it's, when it's late in the evening and it, you know, it's been a day. So, and I went swimming today again, which basically wipes you out. Um, so uh, <laughs> I'm doing it the easiest way I can by one color at a time, so I'm tracing only the black bits now. Okay, uh, roof spikes, clock border, clock hands. Okay, so these clock hands, I'm actually gonna sp spread apart a little bit because there's not really enough room there for me to cut out um, a template, so I'm just gonna move that other one over a bit. All right, I'm just gonna have to remember that these little babies are clock hands, because that's too small to write in. Um, and then two window sills. Where would I find those? Right there. 
so two of those. So I will trace two right away. And once I fuse these to the felt, I'm actually going to leave them on like I did the other ones. I think that'll just help me a little bit. I'm going to write wind sill just because there's other rectangles here and I want to make sure to remember that these rectangles are for the window sill. Wind sill. Okay, and that's all I have for black. That is the black list. Um, I'm just paging through the instructions again. So I printed this off kind of weird. So I think, I think I'm missing. Purple felt. Yeah, I'm missing. Um, and I think it's just because I printed that out really weird, but I'm missing the door, which is for the yellow. So um, I will cut that out as well. But let's let's start here. I think this is it for the black. I'll have to my my instructions printed super weird. So I will I'll double check to make sure I'm not missing anything tonight. Um, we'll cut out that door though, even though it's you know that part's missing from my list, but. Pretty sure there's a little brown door in there somewhere, and we're gonna make that door yellow. Okay, so I'm just kind of cutting this out, um, separating it from the rest, and we'll do the same here. Um, I'm gonna just roughly cut out around all of these. Again, I'm not paying too close attention, just a little tiny border. Uh, once we have this fused to the fabric, that's when we're gonna really cut out our nice, our nice pieces. Oh man, Jenna, I have not heard of that before. Oh, that's interesting. Coraline, which is Little House on the Prairie from the adult mother's point of view. That's interesting. I'm almost like, this is just so silly, but I know that there's a lot of, there's a lot more books um, besides the Anna Green Gables um, by the same author and everything, and I'm scared to read any more of them because I, I just like the Anna Green Gables ones, and I don't wanna, I don't wanna mess it up at all. Sure, they would be messed up, but I don't know. I'm also having that feeling that I don't actually want to finish the books either because then they'll be done, and I'm um I'm down to three left. These I might just kind of keep together. Let's just trim, trim this edge a little bit. Sometimes uh, we did this with the other one. Sometimes it's just easier to just keep this as a group. Then we'll fill in the spaces with this. So, all right, I'm gonna preheat my iron again. I just have the iron on medium. It doesn't take much to, to fuse um, these pieces. I hope this is all I needed. I'm gonna have to, I'm not quite sure I printed out all the instructions correctly, so tonight I will have to check to make sure that I'm not missing any black pieces. Um, but for now, let's just fuse right here. So let's just kind of kind of generally lay out these pieces. I don't want to waste that much fabric, but I don't know what you can do. I could cut these out a little bit more. Let's let's get finicky. I'm gonna just trim these out a little bit more, and maybe we can fit a few more. We can we can Tetris it together a little bit better, maybe. Okay. And you know, there's not gonna really be felt scraps. I'm going to use all of these later. I'm going to get you guys a little bit higher here. All, all this felt is just really nice and I can use it for stuff later. So I'm not, I'm not too worried. This big one can go here, this will go here, and this little circle right there. Okay, we got it. Um, all right, I'm going to start with this piece just to make sure I get everything on. So 
that glossy side is down against the felt. And this is just going to fuse right on. And it, it, you know, so it's stuck on here now. So I can cut these pieces off. But it comes off so easily. And you can actually reapply it later, which is kind of cool. It's just a nifty deal, this uh, fusible, or the um, freezer paper. There. And again, you're going to want, um, you're going to want that wool blend felt because I would not be able to iron onto that eco felt, which is that typical felt that you'd find at a Joann's or something. But this wool blend, you can, you can iron and it's acting just fine. Okay, we are good. Um, now is when we're gonna start just like cutting for real and it just, just to separate it from the rest of the felt, I'm just gonna kind of roughly cut this away. I try not to waste too much felt. I think we'll be fine. Ugh, I'm just gonna cut up there. So, all right, we don't need any more of that. So now um, I'm gonna get you guys lower again. Uh, we are going to trim out all of this black felt now. So I like, um, for these straight lines, I like kind of, I have this dressmaker scissors, which is nice because it's, it's flat. So I can put that right on a flat surface and just um, go up and down versus, versus holding it like this. So for these straight lines, I do kind of like having it on a flat surface and trimming. Sometimes I'll trim out these pieces so I'm not, so I don't have them all sitting here at once. And I'll probably do that in a sec here, but we're already working on this one. Okay, and I like to do it slowly in one big cut too, if I can. Because these are gonna be our actual edges, so we want them nice. All right, so now that this piece is away from the rest, um, it'll be easy to just trim, trim the rest. And I suppose you could use a rotary cutter for this too, but the pieces are small enough, and if you go slow enough, then, you know, we're gonna add stitching, and these are all gonna be seamed together and everything yet too, so if it's not cut like absolutely perfect, or if it's a little squiggly or whatever, um, I'm sure it'll be fine in the end. All right, cool clock platform. There we go. Um, all right, let's trim the rest of these. I am gonna just kind of roughly cut in the middle of these. It's, it, it's easier to cut when they're separated from the rest. So let's just separate them a bit. It is really nice um, doing this with the freezer paper though. I'm, I'm glad I ended up using that method. All right, well, we're just gonna cut right across here. Let's, let's do this roof spikes. And I'm going slow, trying to do big, slow cuts. That when, um, when Betts came out with the uh, the lighthouse that reminded me of Anna Green Gables too. And like when that came out, I was reading the um, Anne's, Anne's House of Dreams and that one, uh, a lot of that one takes place at a lighthouse like that. And so uh, Anna Green Gables all over the place in my brain with, uh, with this little felt village, which is just kind of fun. All right, got to put my scraps on this side. I don't want to mess up my nice stack of stuff. Okay, um, let's work on these little bitties. So luckily I have this nice scissors, so I can just aim for that point and get like a really kind of nice cut there. We're just gonna cut back and forth, I think. Oh, lots of tiny little bits here when we're done. Actually, look, I can do all of them at this this angle all at once. Ha! Now we've hacked it. Oh, Gretchen, you like the lighthouse too? Yeah, that one was just really sweet. Teeth. 
So I'm just looking at the time. We might not actually get to the Peltex yet tonight. Um, so we'll we'll work on this tomorrow yet. But I kind of don't see it taking. What's tomorrow? Tomorrow's still Thursday. Um, I don't see it taking much longer than that because after like we cut out all that gray today and we'll get all this black cut out for sure. Um, I'm just going to do everything from this angle. So yeah, maybe we'll get started on the Peltex, but we'll we'll finish that tomorrow. So that'll be interesting. I've not used the Peltex before, and so we will, at least, I don't know, not, not with my knowledge or not with any, you know, real knowledge of, of using it. So, um... We'll work on that tomorrow for sure. And now that we will not, again, we won't do the freezer paper technique for that because we don't want to, we don't want to get that close to the iron because it has that one side that's fusible, right? So we don't want to fuse that to like, I don't want to fuse it to my little mat here or anything. All right, let's cut the this way. Did I get it? Yeah, there we go. Ooh, I gotta be careful not to actually accidentally snip off any of those little little bits. I think this is kind of a neat way to cut this out though, just cut into that point. I'll have to move all these little triangles out of my way. I mean, even these little triangles you could sew into a cute project, just decorate some felt, some other felt, and make a little coaster or something. Especially Halloween, like with this with this black felt. Like all these colors, you could just stitch the scraps to each other and make some cute uh, holiday coasters. I can't believe it's going to be October already. Ugh. We actually had a chilly day today. It was like mid-80s yesterday, and then it was back to like low 60s today, and uh, God, who knows what's going to be tomorrow. It's just been fluctuating back and forth. It's been kind of crazy. Ah, look how cute. Okay, so this is going to go, I think, on, uh, um, on like this, on this part of the clock tower eventually. So, ooh, that's going to look so cute. All right. I'm still just kind of stacking all these pieces together so they don't fly all over the place. All right, that was the big one. That one, that one uh, um, is what takes the time, all the all those little spikes. But these guys should go pretty quick. And remember, remember to label them too. I, ugh, the less thinking I have to do, the better. So I don't want rando pieces hanging out and me wondering what the heck it was for. I'm excited to stitch these though to embroider them. And it's gonna be fun when they're all of a sudden 3D. Okay, rooftop felt. That's black as well. Out of here, scraps. Oh, here's the one that we wanted to cut on the inside. So let's let's do that. I'll get this nice edge first. I still have that scissors flat on the table. Even if you don't have a dressmaker's scissors where it's where it's flat, this would probably be easy. Just that extra support for a nice straight cut to lean against the table a bit. Oh, hey, Leslie Ann! Well, you're live now. It's nice, nice to see you. All right, one last bit, and let's see. I'm wondering what the best way to trim this middle out is. Um, in theory, I'd love to use the scissors because the scissors is amazing, um, but I think, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna get started with the scissors. So I'm gonna just kind of fold this in half and just cut in the middle here without making sure I don't go over the edge. We're just making a little hole here. What is the best way to do this? I think I'm going to just trim up to a point. 
I think I'll just do it on all the sides. Then we'll just try and connect this. Okay. <laughs> Maybe a smaller scissors would be better, but I just really like this scissors. It cuts through everything like butter. Oh, yay, Leslie, and you bought the felt for this. Yay! Gosh, aren't they all just so darling? I am going to have to go back and make that schoolhouse, I think. That little bell in the tower is just um, too cute. And that, uh, that ice cream shop one, too. I do like that ice cream shop. All right. This is the tower platform. We're a uh, you know, architecture-y. All right. Oh gosh, I got a little, little funny bump in there. I'm gonna just trim that a little bit. Maybe this side a little bit, but all in all, I think that looks pretty good. I suspect that this is mostly gonna be hidden anyway. Um, all right, cool. Uh, that is cut. Fun, fun. And just a few more things to do. All right, let's do all these straight ones first. Okay, this is the door frame. We have the actual door to do yet. And again, like I said, I, I don't think I printed all my instructions very well. Um, it's kind of meant to do on the computer with that Teachable app. Um, so, you know, if I had my iPad open here or whatever, and I could check off our progress. Um, but I just printed it out so it was near me. So I think I'm, I am missing um, the yellow cutting out the, or the door. But maybe I'll just double check on that and we can, we can come back tomorrow and, and trim that. Wow, I did not draw these very straight. <laughs> Hopefully I'm cutting, cutting them a little bit straighter. And I'll, I'll save all of these scraps. Oh, you want to make so many of them. That's awesome, Leslie. Yeah, they really are cute. We might have to do another one here. Just because they are so sweet. Maybe when I'm going through Anne of Green Gables withdrawal when I finish the next three books, um, maybe then I'll have to come back and stitch a lighthouse or something. Okay, so the, these are the clock hands. Looks like we have an hour hand and a minute hand, if I had to guess. Let's just go up like that. Let's get this bottom edge too. There we go. And then I can just cut in the one direction here. So little. Okay, <laughs> these all look like scraps, so I gotta just make sure that I have the little pieces that I need. Oh my gosh, how are we gonna? Hopefully these are just glued on because they're so small. Cute. All right, I do not want to lose those. One more piece. Oh, you purchased some of Beth's ornament PDF files this afternoon. Oh my gosh, Adrian, aren't they cute? So just so you guys know, Betts also has very similar to these, um, this felt village, she, you know, in the sense that they're 3D and made out of felt and have a lot of cute embroidery, she has the cutest little ornaments, you know, like a sewing machine ornament or like a sneaker ornament, um, all with um, felt like this and all 3D and with just adorable embroidery and stuff on too. So she's definitely knows her way around, felt, and it is just, all her stuff is just really cute. So definitely check out Betz's website. And uh, yeah, she has some PDF patterns of, you know, some simple little ornaments and they just look so sweet. It's gonna be fun to stitch some ornaments here. All right, and I'm gonna leave that inside uh, since it didn't specifically say to cut it out yet, and it was mentioned to leave leave all the pieces in. So, all right, here is my stack of pieces. I'm a little worried about 
these little guys, but we're just going to keep an eye on them. Um, so again, like I said, I don't think I printed out everything, all of my instructions, but I suspect that I still need to cut out a door from the yellow. And you know what? We have a little time left and I might just do that. And if I don't need it, then, then yeah, here we go. Then I'll just, you know, have an extra weird piece. I'm going to just double check the picture again. And if you guys are just coming in, I'll show you again what we're making here. We're making the, oops, where'd it go? I got to search for it again. Sorry. Let's um, get it up here. All right. So I'm on, I'm on Betz's, uh, Instagram right here. So this is the spooky clock tower that we're making. And yeah, there's my little brown door right there. I am just going to cut out that, that door. I, I just don't think I printed all the instructions. So we're going to do that tiny little door, but instead of brown, uh, I got this pretty yellow and I did get a ton of the yellow, but that's only because I wasn't sure if I wanted to make a burgundy, um, a, is this big enough? Yeah. I didn't know if I wanted to make a burgundy clock tower or, or a yellow clock tower that, that yellow gold. So I just got the same amount of both. Um, but I'm, I'm happy with this burgundy clock tower. I think it's going to be cute. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, it's the University of Minnesota colors to this, this uh, burgundy and gold. <laughs> Someone mentioned, um, oh, what colors was it for? Some uh, professional football league colors. <laughs> uh, I forget what it was, but... Um, it is the uh, Minnesota Gophers colors, too. Oh, look, I'm cutting this on the edge already, so that's not what I wanted to do. We need to fuse it first. Um, so, whoops. All right, let's just stick that right there. Get it right to the edge. I didn't want to trim all the way to the edge until until I was on the felt because then I can get a nice clean edge. Now I'm going to have to cut cut right at the edge here. I think it's easier when you're cutting the template and the felt at the same time like we're going to do right here like this. Now we can have them both have that nice, perfect same edge as each other. There we go. Door. Door. Oh, make them both and give one to your mom. Well, my mom is a Badger fan, not a Gopher fan, so not quite the same, same colors. <laughs> All right, I kind of want to put this together, but I don't want to lose, lose stuff, but I just want to see like, this is going to be so cute. So this door, there's some other door. Oh, yeah, right here. So I think this door goes on top of here. And then we have these cute little, like, you know, giant wood panels holding the door together or whatever. <laughs> That's cute. And then that'll be on um, this tan, or this uh, burgundy somewhere. So here's our little windows, I suspect. Oh, wait, no, I think this is going to be on... The tan bottom, or the, the, not the tan, the, like the platform here, something like that. Cout! All right, you guys, I am going to tuck these little baby ones. We're going to just kind of place them here so we don't lose them. So, all right, I think, um, so I think this is all the felt. So tomorrow, I think we'll end it here, but tomorrow, okay, good stuff on this side, bad stuff on this side. Uh, tomorrow we'll work with the Peltex. So again, here, if you want to get a closer look at it. Um, so this is the side that has all the kind of like glue on. It's scratchy. And then this side is softer like felt and it is thick. So when you are looking for it at Joann's, uh, first of all, it's called Peltex. Um, and it's, it's uh, thick. It's the only thing kind of 
thick like this and then stiff. It's also stiff. Um, it's not going to flow like foam or something like that. Um, and then it's just glued on one side. So one-sided, stiff, um, firm, uh, fusible. And it is, it is thick like this. So this is what we're going to do tomorrow. We have a few more pieces that's going to add sturdiness to all these other pieces. And then that will be that until we get the embroidery instructions, which will be released um, a little later. I think they'll be released next week. Um, so, oops. So then we will start all the little embroideries on, on here. Um, Robin, it is not sold in sheets. It is sold on like small little bolts. So I think the bolt is only like 20 inches long like this. Um, so it is, it's on a bolt. It's in um, kind of that uh, interfacing section, at least at my Joann's now, they have a tiny little area where, where they have bolts of a pile of random uh, interfacings and stuff like this. Uh, you can just ask specifically for Peltex as well. Um, and again, Betts does have in her kit, she has all this stuff ready to go for you as well. So, all right, you guys, I am gonna flip you around and we'll call it an evening here. All right, so I will double check the instructions. Um, like I said, I think I missed a page, printing a page. I will make sure that I cut all the pieces we need, like all those black pieces and everything. And, and I think it was only the door for, for that yellow. So I'll double check that as well. And yeah, then we'll do the Peltex. I don't think that'll take all night tomorrow. So maybe we'll do, um, Thursday, it's only Thursday tomorrow, so maybe we'll do something else. Maybe we'll go back to our uh, needle turn applique as well. Uh, we could do that uh, tomorrow. So um, a little bit of a few things tomorrow. That'll be good. Uh, this is a nice little break, and then we get back into that needle turn applique. Uh, again, that's, that's this project here. We're doing those needle turn applique leaves, and then we'll be moving on to these little kind of paw prints that's next. So we might be able to do like one of those tomorrow too, because I don't think this will take for take very long tomorrow. So awesome. Thank you again, guys. Uh, if you do want to participate in this, all of the templates and everything are available. If you join the little uh, Felt Village Make Along Club, it's by Betts White. Uh, I have the link below here. And uh, take a look at it. There's uh, 12 different patterns and they're all super cute. Okay, I will get this up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great evening. Good night.